Greetings, friends, and welcome back to our 10th installment of A Bible Refresher in Five. What's in it for you? Pastor Reed Bear here, pastor and teacher at West Parish Barnstable United Church of Christ on Old Cape Cod. Today, I want to talk with you about how the Bible got made. First, how it was not made. I still remember how, as a youngster, my friend Steve from across the street, who was Roman Catholic and went to church on Saturdays at 5 o'clock each week because he assured me otherwise he would be committing an unforgivable sin. Anyway, Steve told me that the Bible was written by a priest when an angel perched on his shoulder and dictated in his ear the entire thing at one sitting. Well, in fact, the Bible which is composed of 66 books, was composed, edited, and assembled over perhaps a thousand years by human beings. Let's look first at what we call the Old Testament or Hebrew Scriptures. Now, for us Protestants, there are 39 books in the Old Testament. Leading off are what have come down to us as the five books of Moses, often thought of as being written by Moses. But the texts themselves make clear that much of them were written after the time of Moses. Well, they tell of what is really the founding story of the Jewish people, the great exodus from slavery in Egypt. And it's commemorated every year in the Passover celebrations. But there was another pivotal moment in the history of the Jewish people when in 587 BCE, the Babylonians overran Jerusalem and deported much of its population to far-off Babylon. This was the exile, which lasted for two generations, 50 to 70 years, before the survivors returned, the descendants returned to Jerusalem and saw to its eventual rebuilding. So much of the Hebrew scripture contains books of prophets warning of the coming destruction, and then of others trying to make sense of how it could have happened, of lamentations about it, about life in the aftermath of the return. And it also contains the Psalms, which were sung in worship, together with wisdom literature, such as the Proverbs, which are intended to instruct in ways of right living. So by the time of Jesus, the canon, the collection of writings which were deemed authoritative, was pretty well established. But think not of a book as we know it. These were collections of scrolls. Then, of course, Jesus. Evidently, no one took a pen and papyrus immediately upon his death and resurrection to write it all down. Instead, stories about Jesus and his life and death and resurrection were passed around orally. Now, in addition, there was a widespread expectation that Jesus would be returning, and soon. He had promised to be with them always, and he was remembered as saying that he would come again. So why write this stuff down? If by the time it hit the bookstores, it would have already been superseded by other events. So it turns out that the first writings that we have are letters Paul the Apostle sent to churches that he had founded, letters which contain fragments of hymns used in worship and which contain his words about Jesus and his meaning. We are talking about later in the first century. Then towards the end of the first century, we get the four Gospels where written accounts of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then by other letters that were often attributed to Paul, but were written later. But still no Bible as we know it. Well, in the second century, the churches got together and they struggled to assemble a group of documents which resemble what we know as the New Testament. The four Gospels would be in, plus the Acts of the Apostles, which were attributed to Luke. Then there were 13 letters attributed to Paul and some others, including Revelation. Fast forward to 397, when a council of churches agreed on what we have now as the 27 books of the New Testament. And the church had already decided that the Hebrew scriptures, what we often refer to as the Old Testament, they also would be included. So bottom line, at last we had, at 397, what we would recognize today as the Bible. 
Now, knowing how the Bible came to be may be of interest to you, and I hope it does not take away from you anything of value. I like what Adam Hamilton says about this. He writes, Knowing the long process by which our Bible came to be does not take anything away from my love of Scripture or my desire to read them every day. I continue to believe that God has spoken through the Bible's human authors, and I experience God continuing to speak to me through these books. But knowing the story allows me to see its humanity, to see it as a product of the churches of their time. Those writings were found helpful to future generations and gradually came to be seen as being set apart by God for the church. What's in the Bible for you? Nothing less than new and abundant life. See you next week, and God bless you all, everyone.